We're just a few KMs away, I believe, from the border. So we thought it would be smart to pull over, double check everything, clean up a little bit, make sure everything's ready for our crossing in case they need to come in and inspect the rig. Squeezing all my mandarins just in case. They don't let us bring them across. That way I don't lose my mandarins. They're already juiced. They're not gonna care. So I'm guessing. We didn't do our due diligence and check online before we came across. We even heard at the visitor center the lady recommending a few tips to somebody else. Then we forgot to go back by and get the details. <laughs> so, so irresponsible. We're just kind of winging it. Winging it. Story of our life. Thing is getting nervous. We've got a border crossing coming up. Definitely see why they call it the top of the world highway. Definitely up here. And oddly enough, even though it's a dirt road, it's actually smoother than some of the other like paved highways we've been on. So on a nice day, I don't think this road is so bad. It seems kind of normal. So, yay! <laughs> we think we're ready, and it's our own country, yeah, so we're going to choose not to record what happens because we're not sure if it's legal, and we most certainly don't want to piss off the country we live in, so <laughs> we're just thinking it's a good idea. Better safe than sorry on this one. And by the way, the road got a little more rough as we get closer to the border, so hopefully it will clear back up. It's not horrible, but it, I mean, it's a bumpy dirt road, but we're still cruising along. It's not like super washed out. We're going, how fast are we going? 45, uh, 45 miles, miles an hour? per hour. Yeah. So, 70 km. Yeah. Not too shabby. U.S. border station, one half mile. Caution gate ahead. We're uh, kind of nervous because we're not sure if they close at 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. It is 7.01 on the dot according to the GPS. I'm a little nervous. I feel like any time I've ever gotten pulled over or searched or anything, it's always been coming back into the U.S. And they're always the ones that take, takes my stuff. And that's what nice pavement sounds like. Yeah, holy smokes. Border closed, 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. Office closed. Let's stop here. Proceed to inspection on green light. Yeah. Okay. So till 9 p.m. then? 9 p.m. 9 p.m. for this time of year as of right now. So there you go. That's what it said. I mean, that could change any time. Yeah. We're way out here. <gasps> green light. Okay. See you on the flip side. Excellent. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. Nicest border patrol agent I might have ever had. Yeah? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, he was so nice. He, of course, asked all the obligatory questions. Are you carrying any firearms? Um, do we have any raw chicken? Because of the whole bird flu yes. thing. He did say, technically, apples aren't allowed. Uh, citrus isn't allowed. Unless it's, he said apples, unless they're in season. He said there's all kinds of like extra details. He said, check the website. And he's like, it may or may not be updated, but. He wasn't too particular about any of it, just mostly the, the raw chicken thing and of course firearms. And then it, did we acquire anything such as alcohol, which we only bought a six pack recently, so that's all we had. So no biggie there. No biggie there. They didn't, he only asked about what we acquired in Canada, so. Not what we had before or anything like that. Yeah, and we asked for more information, but we don't, we don't necessarily want to ask too much. Yeah. How's all of our other liquor that we brought in from <laughs> right. the United States? Is that okay? Like once you're once yeah. you're at that border crossing, the last thing you want to do is offer up too much information. Yeah. So. We just got to this instant rest at, rest area right when you pull over, so we're gonna get out and take a peek and <sighs> take a breath. That was always and it's always a little stressful. The obligatory welcome to Alaska sign photo. Oh, yes. There you go. I'll we'll just say welcome to Alaska. Oh sure. Me? Right yeah, now? hold on. Oh, Singa got out. Oops. Hi, buddy. 
said, uh-oh. Okay, no. Nope. We got a leak. Uh -uh. Yeah. Leak of what? I don't know. We have air leaking out of the tire. It's coming out pretty good. Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah. I had bought some quick spare tire junk. Uh, unfortunately, it says emergency flat tire repair for small tires. I don't think this classifies as a small tire. No, but I think something's better than nothing. Something's probably. better than nothing, I hope. Ah, found it. Big one? It's a nail. Is it? Yep. So you're supposed to leave the nail in or take it out? Oh. I can't remember. Uh, oops. That's a bad one. We'll try the slime because that's all I got. Our tire pressure monitor, though, it was working because it was telling me that I had low pressure. But I just thought it was due to the fact that we were climbing mountains and the temperature is kind of hot, but yet kind of cool in the shade. It actually worked. Shake can, do not remove puncturing object. Oh, do not remove puncturing object. So there's the answer for that. Do not remove the screw. Um, screw nozzle into valve until contents dispense. Inflate until, inflate until can is empty and rim is off the ground. It's acting like it wants me to, it wants me to dig all the air out of the tire. And then you're supposed to reinflate it? Then you reinflate it with this can, which is why this is made for a small tire. I, I'm afraid to do that. No, because it's such a big tire. Yeah, that's 90 PSI. It's only at 85 PSI right now, so it's only lost a little bit. We probably could make it another couple hours. I don't know how far away chicken is. Here goes everything. Oh, I bet, I bet it wants you to get rid of the air so the contents can actually get inside the tire. I can hear a little bit of something happen. Oh, I got green slime on me. Ugh. Think it's working? I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling this is going to the I actual connector. Yeah, and not just, going anywhere else. Yeah. It looks like it's just slowly leaking out. Yep. I can see it just pouring out of there. Okay, watch out, it might explode, I don't know. Well, that's a fail. Damn, yep, it's all still in there. Dang it. So we are gonna wing it because some guys just pulled over and said that chicken is only about an hour. Which means chicken. Yeah, hey, yeah, take it yeah. Easy. And we're gonna see if we can make it there um, before the tire goes, but we do have the tire pressure monitoring system. So hopefully it'll keep an eye on the exact pressure for us. And if we feel like it gets too low, we can pull over and try to air it up. Um, and if not, then we'll just figure it out. I don't know, that's where we are. Look at that beautiful tarmac. Baby, looking good, smooth as butter. I have a nail in my dang tire. My GPS wants to pretend like this road doesn't exist. So I have no idea how far away chicken it is, how far away chicken is. The dudes that came and pulled over, they looked like they were high to say the least, and they were like, that's a wicked party, oh my god, chicken's only like an hour away, so I don't really trust them either. And to top it all off, my gas tank says it's less than a quarter of a tank, which means about a hundred, maybe a hundred miles or so before we are empty. Needless to say, things aren't looking so hot, and we could potentially be up Shit Creek, excuse my French, without a paddle. On multiple levels. Oh uh, yeah, cell phones don't work. Yeah, this is the downside of not really ever planning very well, at least. Well, yeah. He's definitely starting to feel the stress of everything compounding. And I agree, the gas thing is... Mm, and the AC doesn't work, so it's hot. Damn it. <laughs> yep, he's getting frustrated. 
gonna get good. Pretty soon we'll get the like, he runs it all together and he, he comes up with every curse word he's ever known and just crams it into one solid word. It's very interesting. If we get there, we'll try to capture it. We just hit 51 PSI, so that's almost half. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull over at the next pull out and see if my air pump can can maybe handle it. Handle it. Here. This is the bay I haven't organized yet. <laughs> Not pull here, okay. Okay. This thing is legit. <laughs> Woo! Yay, welcome to Alaska. Okay. Okay. <laughs> love Jason but sometimes he can be the bit uh he can be a bit of a Tim the tool man Taylor I don't know if you ever saw tool time that's kind of Jason or if you've seen our how not to videos then you kind of know why I'm nervous I gotta turn it on <laughs> point made Not a fan of this this stupid braided thing. I can't get pressure on. Ah, come on. Woo! I know this is working. <laughs> I think I'm giving it air, but you'll have to keep an eye on the... I can't see the dial, you'll have to do it for me. Okay. What do you think? Is it working? I don't know. It was higher before and now it's lower, so maybe you're just losing air so fast you can't. Well, um, I keep moving because it's stupid braided. Uh, connector from the tire. Uh. The exhaust is right here. It's not it's ideal. A, a whole lot of crap. supposed to be the best one you can buy for an RV and obviously I didn't read the directions so I think this one actually can screw on and maybe that'll fix my problem. Duh. Maybe he won't have to curse so much. I'm not judging. I'm not judging. Okay, it's reading the pressure. Woo, that would be bad. I just popped out the instructions again, and this is a um, air filter. So I think there's actually a plug keeping the air from entering, which is why it's not working. <sighs> Learning under pressure is never good. Move temporary protective red plug. Oh, there you go. Install inlet air filter into the Crescent's air inlet port. Hand tighten inlet air filter.
we're also low on fuel. Yes, we're low on fuel too. So now I think it's working. We should have plenty of charge on the chassis battery. Now it's going. Now we're cooking with Crisco. All right, when I let go, it shows 62. Yay! I knew other RVers didn't lie to me when they told me this is the best one. I was like, this piece of crap's not working. <laughs> this idiot didn't read the directions. Uh, shows almost 70. Hey, so we can drive 20 miles, stop, put air in, drive 20 miles, stop, put air in, until the nail comes out and then we're just effed. Yeah, totally. <laughs> we just gotta make it an hour according to the stoner dudes. At the pull out. They are so reliable. Alright, 94, that's gonna do. That'll do, that'll do. I'm not gonna put this away because I have a feeling we're gonna need it again. Yep, let's just put it inside the coach. I don't know where the keys are, they might be inside. Oh, they might be in the engine. Oh, yeah, that's where they are. <laughs> Oh man, my tire pressure monitor just told me it's at 20 PSI. Which means it's not holding at all. 20 PSI, yeah. So that must mean that the nail has come dislodged or it's just torn a complete hole in the traction or the tread. I did see a sign with 30 miles from chicken. So I'm just gonna go 15 miles an hour. Be there in an hour and a half. And I don't, there's no cell phone. I don't know what else we could do. There's probably nothing else we could do, so this is this is what we're doing. It's official. Oh, and the road turned back to dirt, so we lost our beautiful tarmac. So I'm sure that's not helping at all. Not even a little. There's still plenty of pressure in there. So I think maybe my um, tire pressure monitoring system's letting me know that the air is leaking out really fast. So there's zero pressure left. I don't know what it's telling me, but. It's definitely not like crazy flat. Yeah, it's not like falling off the rim flat yet. All right, well then let's hop back in and keep going. And at least you can try to drive faster. Yeah, I know that's what I'm saying. Yay, safety first. This is how stressed out Singa is about the entire situation. Yeah, is it, is it real rough? Now it's, uh, it's jumping all over the place. 15, 21, 16. It doesn't know what to think. It's been the longest 30 miles. We've driven in a really, really long time. We made it. We made it to the chicken. Bah, bah, bah. Ha. Here's the deal. We got a kit and the guy said, this is the kit you want to have if you have an RV. It's got these things. It's got some rubber cement. It's got a screwy drilly thingy and it's got a plugger yep yep it's a screw or a nail yeah it's a screw it was a phillips head self-drilling so far so good this thing i'm not flipping you off i promise I can't believe there's not like air just like rushing out of there. He right? Said, he said you can't damage it. This way. There's your air. You know what I should do? What? 
I should just double check the directions. Ah, here we go. Step number two. Put two or three drops of cement on tip of probe and insert into injury. Work probe up and down to clean injury channel. Repeat this process two to three times. Is that just the tip, yeah? That's what it says. Okay. If only they're too long, it is rubber cement. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yep, that's probably good. There's your air leak, honey. It says work probe up and down. Repeat this process two to three times. Yeah, this third end of repair material through eye of needle and pull through until strip is centered in needle. Apply cement to tip of needle. Okay. You got it? Yeah! Okay. Now you're supposed to put rubber cement yep. on the tip. Again. Again, just the tip. It says, it says the tip, but I'd load that sucker up. Insert needle firmly into the tire injury all the way to the needle handle. Leave a four or a quarter inch of the string outside the tire. Good lord. Okay. So you're supposed to squeeze it all the way in there until there's only a quarter of an inch out. That's what it says. I don't know if my hole's deep enough. Uh, it sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> quarter inch? Yeah, and it says turn the handle one quarter turn and remove needle. Okay. Turn it a quarter turn and remove handle? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Yes. All the kids at home see you. Uh, then what? Okay. Then it says, cut insert one eighth an inch from tread. Why didn't I just push it in further? And then it says, inflate tire to normal operating pressure and test for air leaks. Then take tire immediately to a professional. So what it says? Full service tire shop where permanent tire repair can be performed according to RMA guidelines. This just looks dangerous. Yeah. And that whole thing about taking it to a professional. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Well, we might get there and they might say, oh, you're gold, but you know. Yeah, we'll go get a second opinion. We'll start with that. God, did you, bah, I cut myself a little bit. Did you really? Yeah, just a little bit. Where? Right there. <laughs> see that? I'm gushing blood. <laughs> can you see that? <laughs> Finish up so we can go have a beer. Okay, I'm done. Now I just gotta air it up. I just wanna thank all of those <laughs> out there who believed in me. This is for you. Believed in you? <laughs> this is thumbs up. <laughs> I'm gonna go air her up. Oh. Grab yourself a band aid while you're at it. Oh, thanks. Just don't use any of the local water, it's got a coli. <laughs> not think that through. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> uh, PSI. Okay. <sighs> 84. Well, 83.5. Put my pressure monitor back on. I think that wraps up a wonderful day on the road. Welcome to Alaska. One last note, all of the things we used today that totally saved our arse, like the air pump and the tire pressure monitoring system and the little 
plug stuff. What's the plug stuff? Plug stuff. Okay, plug stuff, yeah. Anyway, we'll link to all of that in the post and we'll put a link somewhere here. So anyway, you can check it all out in case you need it to. Because you never know when you're gonna get screwed. <laughs> oh, let's go have a drink. Okay. Sounds like a plan. I know where the parkour is.